BMW Z Series, and we'll still be talking in the affordable performance car range. That's cars that go quick, again today being a quick car, not a fast car, for under $100,000. Um, today we have new microphones. Uh, he has a lapel mic. We're going to see how that sounds. We have a new audio recorder as well. Um, in testing, it was very loud and it was um, popping the mic. So we'll see how that sounds. If the audio is a little weird, that's probably the cause and we apologize for that. But we'll see how that works. we got to figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, today we're not brought to you by Protein, but I am. And we also bring you a louder car because this no longer has mufflers in it. So we're sorry if you hear that too. But without further ado, let's talk about the BMW Z Series. Um, as far as I know about the Z Series, they're smaller cars, right? And they have, obviously, they're gonna have less power because they have smaller engines. Mm -hmm. But the whole point of them is similar to the Miatas. What is that an Oscar Mayer wiener? That's an Oscar. They're small, quick cars with, you know, I mean, because they're light, they're very sporty, they even whip them around and stuff like that. And, I mean, I guess for me, they look like it would be a competition, a, a competitor to the Miata and the 128 Spider, which we'll talk about as we compare these cars. But we're, uh, he has all the information today, which is why he's got the lapel mic on, so I'm gonna go ahead and let him start. All right, so as he said, the MBB Z Series, uh, specifically Z4. Z4 comes in three models, the S-Drive 28i, S-Drive 35i, and S-Drive 35i S. We're going to start with the lowest model. I'm sorry, that's my GPS. I need this GPS on though. Um, S-Drive 28i starts at $49,700. It comes with a four-cylinder, two-liter turbo engine that produces 240 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. That is about it. That's all the engine has to offer. And then within the car, it has, or with the car, it has the S-Drive rear-wheel drive system. Basically meaning, the car is in a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. Meaning, from the middle to the front, middle to the back, it's equal weight all the way across. Giving you the smoothest experience you possibly can get when cornering, turning, driving in a straight line with, this, with these kind of cars. Um, then they have the corner and brake, uh, control which is their CBC basically it asymmetrically adjusts brake pressure as you drive for example let's say uh, I'm driving the Z4 and I see a corner coming up and I want to hit it hard I realize halfway through the corner oh no I can't hit it this hard so I brake when I start braking I start oversteering the computer senses that and adjusts the brake pressure for me as I'm braking and readjusts the car so I will not oversteer extremely and weave into the other lane which is actually really, really good for terrible drivers, you know what I mean? Then we have the adaptive M suspension. So basically it's electronically controlled dampers. It adapts to your driving style and it adapts to the road itself, which is just another thing to give the small little car better, smoother rides. So think about it. Let's say uh, you live in a city where we live where there's always construction and the roads are always bumpy. These dampers are automatically stiffened and softened as you drive to give you the overall smoothest experience it can possibly get you. Which would be a lot better because let's say you're driving a lot of distances, it help you with fatigue a lot more. Because with stiff cars, you get fatigued easier. With smoother cars, you can I can go ahead and drive like 12, 15 hours, no problem. You know what I mean? That's basically all it offers. I'm gonna move on to the interior now. The interior is very simple and BMW-esque. So it has its dark and light fake wood trims. It has its dark and light uh, leather and it has their hand stitch seats and then their BMW mat and their BMW console system so what I mean by console system is like the mid console area it's all BMW sport like it has its little dials has its little buttons here and there so overall it's all BMW esque other than that it doesn't really offer much it has two seats has a little bitty trunk that's it this car has nothing offers nothing more it's a very tiny tiny cockpit um, other than that, I'm gonna move on to the next one. So the Z4 S Drive 35i, which starts at fifty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Comes with a three-liter, six-cylinder turbo engine, which is producing 
both 300 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque. Not bad in a small car that weighs around, what? 3,200, 3,500 pounds. Right? Not bad at all. I think can get it. Again, it still comes with its rear-wheel drive system. It still comes with its uh, CBC, which is the cornering brake uh, control, and it still comes with its adaptive M suspension. Nothing else. It just has a bigger engine and a bigger price. Now we're going to move on to the Z4 S-Drive 35IS, which starts at $66,350. It comes with a 3-liter six cylinder turbo engine which is producing 335 horsepower and 332 to 369 pound feet of torque why is that because it has an electronic controlled overboost function meaning depending on where you're driving depending on what you're doing the torque on the vehicle itself will fluctuate in my mind i'm assuming this is to save gas but i don't see why why not just keep it 335 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque Give that little extra push all the time. Um, other than that, the car isn't really special. It may be a little bit nicer on the inside. Um, other than that, it comes with all the other packages and all the other stuff that BMW has. And the packages include their Hyper Orange package, which is a Valencia Orange metallic paint. The really nice, cool, orange, expensive paint with the Alcantara, Alcantara sport seats with obviously orange accents to match your paint on the outside that's it that's all that package is then it comes with the m sport package <clears throat> which isn't really sport it kind of just um, gives you a sporty feel sporty look it really just gives you an air kit a uh, m steering wheel which is just a regular bmw steering wheel with uh, an m badge and it's flat at the bottom so it's sporty get it like a sports steering wheel then it comes with their um, really nice Alcantara headliner, which actually I think is a nice touch. And that's about it. Nothing really too special about their M Sport package. Then their sound package, which is um, like every other car that we've so far, they have a sound package, which is just a better subwoofer and generally more speakers. So this one comes with a subwoofer and eight speakers rather than just six speakers. Then we have their Hyper Burnt Sienna package which is um, their choice of, I think, five to six really nice high and expensive paints. They're ivory or uh, black Napa leather, and then they're really nice, more expensive wood trim, which in my opinion looks pretty decent, actually, but not worth it. <clears throat> Other than that, they do not offer that much on these Z cars, and that's literally all there is to it. There's nothing more and there's nothing less to these Z cars. Anything else to add? Um, well, I guess talking about you know our idea of value, comfort, performance. These cars are overpriced as hell. Yep. Um, and I say that in comparison to cars that we've already kind of reviewed. Um, yep. Particularly the Miatas, because this car is about being small and quick. Right, very light with a smaller engine. But the power that the engine makes is just enough for the weight and for it to go around corners and handle well on the track or whatever, or canyon roads or mountain roads, which is what these are really for. But $46,000 to $66,000, that's a lot of money for a car with not a whole lot of power and not a whole lot to offer outside of Yep. The interior is not super extravagant. Um, nothing in it's like super crazy, crazy, amazing from what it sounds like. Yeah. And when, when you think about it, it's like you're asking yourself, what are what am I paying for? What what in that car is worth sixty six thousand dollars? Because it sounds more like it should be worth like thirty thousand dollars, thirty five, maybe even forty thousand dollars just because of the bigger engine, because that's because comparing it to the Miata, it's got a whole extra liter and two extra cylinders. So sure, it'll cost more, and it's a little bigger, so it'll yep. cost more, and just material-wise and tuning. So I guess, I mean, really, since it's a BMW product, what I'm thinking is it could be the 
BMW bad. The quality control, the the, le the craftsmanship and stuff like that. But that's if they put that kind of stuff in the Z series cars like they do with the M series cars. Which yes. Might not be, a, which might not be the case. And in that case, you have to ask yourself, why am I paying an average of fifty something thousand dollars for a car like this? When for at the most sixty six thousand dollars, you can get a Corvette Stingray with well over a hundred extra horsepower, still very light for the size of the car, and it's already a bigger car, so you have a bit more storage space and it's a little bit more daily friendly. Um, I, in my opinion, um, or it sounds like it seems like it's more friendly as a daily driver, despite being a crazy sports car. Mm -hmm. And I know once again, it's like it's just the price. When you, with, with a Corvette, you're getting a bigger engine, like way bigger engine, and you're getting good performance, like top end performance. Because the Corvette team that makes that develops all of that with the brakes and the uh, tuning and every, the suspension, and everything that is what you're paying for in that car. And if that's not something that's present in the BMW, it's just not worth it, especially with the smaller engine comparatively to the Corvette. And I'm talking about Corvettes quite often right now because mm -hmm. next month is going to be a Corvette video, so I hope you guys stick around for that. But outside of Corvettes, um, I mean, if just going back to the Miatas, Miatas are twenty some thousand dollars. It's a third of the price, and even half of the price on the low end C series versus the high end Miatas, right? Yeah. And you're still getting a quick car that takes corners really well. It's a canyon driver, a mountain driver, whatever you want to take it for, trails, stuff like that. And you can whip it around, and it's so confident and yeah. so balanced and handles so well. Even if you want the lowest end Z4, you can get the highest end Miata with all the cool tech packages and still save like 20 grand. Yeah. Right? And still enjoy the car in the Canons with all the nice tech, with all the nice speakers, nice seats, everything. Like, what's the point with these Z-Series? Yeah, like, it's just not worth it. It doesn't have the life that the M-Series cars has, and it just doesn't have the appeal that BMW typically has. And that's kind of uh, uh, annoying for that fuck, that huge sticker price that's on it. And, honestly, like I said, it's just really not worth it to me. I mean, if you think it's worth it, feel free to tell me if you had one before or if you've experienced one and it's actually way better than it sounds on paper on looking up the information for it, then feel free. But right now, just from what we're gathering, from the information we can find that's available to everyone and putting it together for this video for you guys to figure out what cars you guys want or are interested in buying it, it just doesn't sound like it's worth it to handle. being said uh nothing else nah, nothing thank you so much for watching episode 8 of 100 tc's with us um i know this one was a little bit more negative but i just don't like the car no don't not at all um but next month we're gonna be talking about corvettes and that's gonna be fun and then in the last yeah. last episode coming out it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be a good car yeah uh we're gonna be cutting it very close to that six figure limit or a hundred thousand dollar limit. Yeah. So, but with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Yep. Please stay safe while you're driving. I really hope the audio turned out well. Well, you'll find out in editing, I guess. Yeah. You guys much. will find out when the video goes out. Um, we finally have a hundred CC video coming out out in September. Uh, we managed to go to that show. It was a really good show, and we hope you guys like it. Cars and coffee show. Yeah, cars and coffee. That's what I mean. And then. Later on, we might be putting out something very different and interesting involving this car exactly. So, until then, we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.
mic is hurting my nipple. I don't even know. 